Hey guys, it's Wednesday again, time for another snapshot video. So Mojang has been really consistent with the Wednesday snapshot releases so far. And yeah, this week also same story as the last week's. Some really good stuff has been added, so nothing to complain about at all. Some really good stuff, but of course it's not really super game changing. Okay, so the first change is we have Piglin heads in the game now. The new Piglin head is quite similar to the existing heads that we have in the game already, but there's a couple subtle differences. For example, it has a different hitbox, so it's wider than the other heads. So if you look at this, the hitbox here leaves a gap of three pixels to each side, which is different, for example, from the creeper or skeleton head, which leaves four pixels of space. Same applies for the dragon head. Looks much larger visually, but it has the same hitbox as a normal creeper head. Then, apart from that, it's just as high, so half a block high. And if you attach it on the wall, it also sticks out half a block like the creeper head. So it's just wider if you place it down on top of a block. Similar to the dragon head, there's also an animation for the piglin head. It flaps its ears when attached to a power source. So you can also turn this on or off, uh, yeah, just normal lever for example. And also similar to the player bearing dragon head when running, opening its mouth, the ears also flap while you're running. So how do you obtain a piglin head in survival? The same way you can obtain some of the other heads. So Mojang didn't add, for example, a drop chance like there is for the wizard skeleton. So you have to use a charged creeper, similar to the way you can get creeper or zombie heads. Right, let's try it out. Let's put a piglin in there. Let's ignite the creeper of the flint and steel. And there we go. It drops one piglin head. Also similar to all the other mobs, you can't get two heads uh, just by exploding one charge creeper. We can also try that out real quick. It would only drop one. Try it again. There we go, one piglin head again. Just a side note because I was testing it again. So in 2022, we still can't use the flint and steel inside of the dispenser to ignite a creeper. Well, a parity issue, it should also be fixed at some point. Yeah, you can do it manually, why can't the dispenser do it? There's also a new skull and head related feature, so another incentive to farm those. If you put the heads on top of a node block and then click the node block, it will play an ambient sound of the corresponding mob. You can also use redstone to trigger it automatically. You can use an observer clock to spam it as well, if you really want to. So let's maybe listen to some of the ambient sounds. So it does work with the dragon, the creeper as well. And I think that's probably gonna be the main use for pranks. <laughs> Imagine putting this in someone's space, triggering it for clock sometimes, making people paranoid. I guess that's probably the main use of this feature. Your skeleton sounds. Here's a skeleton. Zombie. And it doesn't work with the normal player head that you can get in the creative menu, of course. Okay, then, yeah, I'm not really sure if there's any uses when it comes to redstone. So technically you can now detect a mob head being placed, but I'm not entirely sure how useful this is. So it's kind of interesting, um, the head has priority over the block below the node block. So when it comes to, to playing the sounds, as you can see, if I switch the block now below, we get an output, but once you have a head, and on top, it doesn't matter what's below the no block. There's also a really important change for nether mobs spawning. So wizard skeletons, skeletons and endermen can now spawn at light level 7 or lower. Previously in 1.19, it was light level 11 or lower. And before that, they couldn't spawn in any light level in 1.18. So this was changed in 1.19, so wizard skeletons, endermen and skeletons can now spawn at light level 11 or lower, which meant they could spawn inside of portal blocks. So it was super easy to make a yeah, nether-based skeleton or wizard skeleton farm. All you had to do was place down a lot of portals, then you could also prevent larger mobs like gas and mega cubes from spawning and then you had an automatic super easy wizard skeleton farm for example. So this would no longer be possible because the wizard skeletons can't spawn in light level 11 which is the, the portal light level. So they can only spawn in 7 or lower. Blaze for example are unaffected by this change so they can still spawn at light level 11 or lower. So it's yeah super easy now to make a um, blaze only farm in a nether fortress for example. 
All right. Um, I don't think this change is gonna be super important in the long run because it's yeah not really hard to make a wizard skeleton farm anyway. Now I just can't use the portals again. Also, don't be too angry with Mojang that they changed this in case you have a portal-based wizard skeleton farm. When this change was introduced in 1.19, they pointed out that they're gonna revisit this. So I remember when I made a snapshot video about this, I already warned people that it's probably gonna be changed at some point anyway. And I also would be surprised that at some point in the future, mobs won't be able to spawn inside of portals at all anymore. A couple more changes that aren't really relevant to survival, but I want to talk about it anyway because it's quite interesting. There are now loot tables for endermen held block drops. I think this was yeah, introduced in order to fix a bug. So the bug affected basically endermen that were holding a powder snow block. So something you could do using commands in survival and endermen would never pick up powder snow but there was this bug if you kill such an enderman it would actually drop a bucket of powder snow yeah so you would get a bucket out of nowhere basically and this was fixed now you have loot tables um, this means you can now also adjust those loot tables yourself in case you want a different survival experience for example one idea that i had in case you have for example an enderman holding sand you kill the fire aspect that it would drop a glass block so you could maybe introduce endermen smelting yourself if you want this similar to certain mobs dropping cooked food if you kill them um this is something i would want in survival though i don't think i really would want this mostly because every time i use a furnace from now on people would point out that i could use endermen smelting instead um nah i don't want this <laughs> There's also a new command that could be quite useful. There's the fill biome command that allows you to change the biome in a certain volume of blocks. So you just need to select two corner points and then you can you know, change it to any biome. So you could change this, for example, to a basalt delta biome. You can see we get the, the ash particles now and also the ambient music for the yeah, basalt delta biome. So this can be quite handy. I used this before for making a, a custom map and had to use world edit for that. That's quite neat. Now we can just use vanilla commands for this. As usual, we also have some creative inventory changes. This time the redstone tab got cleaned up. So we no longer have every type of wooden pressure plate in there because this basically clogged up half of the you know, redstone tab. It also affects the you know, fence gate trapdoor and door for example only blocks that are functionally different from each other are now in the redstone tab so this definitely helped clean up the clutter a little bit but interesting here bamboo raft of chest is still in there and also boat reason is you actually sit a little bit higher on the raft compared to the boat um, you can also check with the f3 menu 64.95 on the raft and 64.55 on the boat so that's why this is still yeah in the redstone menu despite being quite similar yeah, okay so you can also find the other type of pressure plates traps and so on in the building block tab now and then additionally the minecarts were also added um, to the tools and utilities tab so you can find them here in redstone and tools and utilities you might have noticed something really cool here as well I have some really long um, yeah, potion effects that I gave myself for the creative world. Previously, this wasn't displayed correctly, so I only had stars indicating they had it some really long time uh, duration. But yeah, you never knew exactly how much time was left. And now this is finally displayed correctly. Also affects survival. Um, if you had the bad omen effect in survival, it didn't display correctly how much time was left, for example. And this should also be fixed now. The bookshelf also gets some love again and a much requested feature was added. You can now select a certain slot to put your book in. So no longer will it just fill up from left to right and top to bottom. You can now just select a certain slot and put your books in and also take them out from a certain slot. Yeah, this also applies to the comparator output. So now we put a book in slot 6 last. So this is the last slot it was interacted with. If I take out a book from the first slot, now we got a signal strength output of one. Yeah, and we can also take this out, we got the full signal strength output of six. 
Okay, this of course only affects uh, books that were put in by the player. If you use a hopper to um, put in books or take them out, they will still be filled from left to right and then top to bottom. One last thing, the top texture of the bamboo block and the bamboo plank got changed. That's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.